we can become great at doing the the things that we do well, the things that are, we focus on. Like I'm, I think our audience is great at selling liberty. I think we have yeah. been amazing at doing that. Welcome to the Brian Nichols Show, your source for common sense politics on the We Are Libertarians Network. As a sales and marketing executive in the greater telecommunications cybersecurity industry, Brian works with C-level executives to help them future-proof their company's infrastructure for an uncertain future. And in each episode, Brian takes that experience and applies it to the liberty movement. You start to ask questions that piques interest and get him to feel like, okay, this guy's actually got something that maybe can help me out. And then in your asking of questions and trying to uncover the real problems, build that natural trust. I know I went in the monologue there, man. (laughs) Instead of focusing on simply winning arguments or being right, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and their application in the world of politics, showing you how to ask better questions, tell better stories, and ultimately change people's minds. And now, your host, Brian Nichols. Good morning, happy Tuesday. Welcome into the Brian Nichols Show. I am your host on today's Sell Short. My name is Jeremy Todd. Thanks for joining me. Um, this morning, I want to take the opportunity to talk about one of the most important things in sales, and that is the field of physics. Now, what on earth can physics have to do or teach us about sales? Well, it all goes back to a gentleman by the name of Isaac Newton. And he had these laws of motion, and that's how they're they're laws. It's how physical things interact with one another. But the one that we want to talk about today is something called inertia. And you probably remember this all the way back in grade school about um, an object in motion will remain in motion, and an object at rest will remain at rest unless... They are acted upon by an outside force. So what that means is that if there is a ball and it's sitting there, it's not going to just move on its own. Um, And if a ball is moving, something is going to need, it's going to continue to move unless it's acted on by an outside force. Same with the ball that's stationary. If it's not acted upon by an outside force, it's not going to move. That is probably ringing some bells in some people's heads about, oh man, that sounds like 30, 40, 50% of my pipeline. They, I just can't seem to get them to move. So, let's talk a little bit about why potential prospects don't move and how what are some things that we can do to sort of get the ball rolling and overcome that inertia so inertia with our prospects looks a lot like well we've already got one and we'll think about it next quarter you know um it's basically they they've come up with the objections of i don't need it um, we're not in a hurry. There's no urgency. They're fine with the status quo. So if your customer is fine with the status quo, there are some things that you've obviously missed in the value building and, uh, and, and problem discovery phase of your sales approach. So if they are stuck in this status quo almost Uh, No urgency moment. This is when you need to really focus on three areas. Number one, there are, uh, well, this would be one and two. There are two things that cause people to move. uh, And that is pain and the pursuit of pleasure. So when I say pain, these are the things that what does your product or service solve about their business, about their life? What problems do you solve in their daily existence that they absolutely hate having to deal with? See, it's not always a, a trade-off of return on investment dollars-wise. A lot of times the salespeople, especially newer ones, will get stuck in this concept of, 
Well, can it pay for itself? Can my solution pay for itself for this customer? And it's okay to have a more expensive product that just makes your customer's life easier. People will pay a premium to not have to deal with their pain points throughout the day. And so when you, if you haven't found those areas of pain that you can focus on that are value builders. So these are things like time, efficiency, peace of mind. These are all things that can be pain points that people will pay to get out of their life. Even if there's no real tangible dollar and cents return on investment. <clears throat> the second part are the uh, pleasures. So these are things that make their job more fun, better, efficient. Um, they may not necessarily solve a pain point, but they can. They're, these can be kind of like the grease in the gears is the way to think about it. So if you can improve, let's say their efficiency by 10, 20%, or you can make uh, your product is uh, more beautifully crafted, easier designed. <laughs> See, one of the things my current workplace focuses on heavily is that uh, they've invested a lot of money into the architecture and beauty of the buildings. And that is a differentiator because when people walk in, it just makes them feel good. So what about your product makes people feel good? Because remember, buying is emotional and overcoming the status quo is about helping them end pain and feel good. The last one is about creating urgency. Every business is going to, you are going to have to win over somebody in accounting. Somebody who says, yes, this is a good investment. It's okay to spend the money on this. And so how, when's the last time you calculated opportunity costs for your customer? Is that part of your slide deck when you present, okay, look, it, when I break it down into dollars and cents, what does it look like if you stay with your current status quo and how much money is that going to cost you if we wait six months? Because if you can tangibly show a customer, <clears throat> this is going to cost you a couple hundred, a couple thousand, tens of thousands, a hundred thousand, a million dollars to sit on this for three more months. Well, that's a little bit of a spark that will cause somebody to move. That can overcome the inertia of status quo. And so those are your three things that you can put in your toolbox and you want to focus on if you've got those dead prospects. Number one, what are their pain points? If you don't know that, go find it. Go figure it out. Go spend some time with them and show how you can remove that pain and frustration from their life. Number two, what do you do that makes their life better, more enjoyable? So um, think of your design elements. Think of your um, efficiencies. Think of all the things that will bring them pleasure about what they do when they do business with you. The, your service department, you personally, you know, some cookies. Uh, whatever it may be, relationship uh, type stuff. And then lastly, make sure you are calculating the opportunity cost of how much it is going to cost them or how much they are potentially going to miss out on by doing business with you over the next three months, the next six months, so that you can... Uh, get them to stop sitting on it until next quarter and create some urgency around the buying decision. Thanks so much for tuning in with me this morning. I've been your host, Jeremy Todd. Let's go make it a great Tuesday. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com. 
If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe. Want to help us reach more people? Give the show a five-star review and tell your friends to subscribe too. Find us at briannicholsshow.com and download the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow me on social media at bnicholsliberty and consider donating to the show at briannicholsshow.com forward slash support. The Brian Nichols Show is supported by viewers like you. Thank you to our patrons, Daryl Schmitz, Laura Stanley, Michael Lima, Mitchell Mankiewicz, Cody Johns, Craig DaCosta, and the We Are Libertarians Network.